a more ball control defensive approach, you know, but in the Big 12, that's always been kind of difficult. Do you, how long do you think you guys can sustain that with the vets in depth on defense? Uh, I would say um, right now we're doing well. We're handling adversity, of course, from the first week. And just attacking each week, day to day, by getting better, you know, uh, implement more stuff, continue to add on to what we've been doing, just keep adding. And I feel like uh, we're farewell pretty – we're farewell pretty well each week as it continues. Yeah, and with that change in offense, how has that changed your uh, your duties as Cowboy back with more run blocking approach? Oh, uh, well, um, it really just helped us just focus on just the fundamentals of things, just – Helping, you know, helping out the O line if they need help. Helping out in pass protect. Um, sometimes if we out, uh, we out. We just, you know, keeping steady, staying to the focus of what Coach Dunn has for us, and try to capitalize on every opportunity. Thanks, Jelani. Our next question comes from Scott Wright from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Scott. Jelani, following up on that, how would you uh, how would you grade your uh, your blocking so far this season? Um, blocking standpoint, I would pretty much say a B because, you know, nothing is perfect. And I feel like we can get – I can get – personally get better each week and take a step every day in practice or really in meetings, take a step on just improving my technique. So I would really pr- probably say around a B right now and try to get better from there. You spend a lot of time blocking next to uh, Tevin Jenkins. How has he played so far this year? Uh, I feel Tevin Jenkins play awesome. I feel like um, each play, no matter if it's off the field, on the field, he always gives it his all, and he just he plays like all American, and that's what you like to see. Awesome, appreciate it, Jelani. No problem. Our next question comes from Jenny Carlson from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Jenny. Hey, Jelani, how are you? I'm good. How about you? Doing all right. Hey, um, the questions before about uh, sort of a, your offense that's more run heavy. Um, you know, right now you guys are sort of winning with old school scores, really. I mean, not many games in the Big 12 get one, you know, 16 yeah. to 7, that sort of thing. Um, even though, you know, maybe in years past when you guys were scoring 30, 40, 50 points, you might only be winning, you know, by 10 or 14 points. Does it feel different to look up on the scoreboard and see, you know, scores in the 20s and that being okay for you guys? Uh, no, not really. Not exactly. Um, our goal coming in this year is to pretty much score 45 points or plus. But, you know, as the adversity we've been having, the last, like last week against Tulsa and then trying to build off of that, you know, we kind of slowing it down, but we still trying to reach that goal. So just like as an offense, we're trying to take it a step at a time and just improve from there. I assume if you guys are going to get to the 30, 40 point uh, mark on a regular basis, a guy like Tylen Wallace is probably going to catch the ball a lot. He looks like a guy that never got hurt. What have you all seen out of him as uh, as the season's progressed? Um, I just – I feel like he uh, – he looks better than before. It's just like, uh, I don't want to say being hurt, you know, made it better for him. But I feel like he attacked it, his uh, rehab and everything. It came back stronger, faster. And he looks more, he looks way more like um, athletic. It's just, it's unbelievable. And just having that in them and having that like aspect added to his game, I feel like it's awesome. And I feel like that will help the offense in big time. Cool. Thanks, Jelani. No problem. Our next question comes from Garen Emig from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Garen. How you doing, Mr. Woods? I'm good. How about you? I'm great. Thank you very much. Uh, how uh, how nice is it to know that until the the offense finds its its rhythm and its gear, uh, that you've got a defense this year that is really on top of things and and is and is gonna gonna hold uh, as Jenny referenced the opponent and scores down a lot lower than you're used to seeing? Uh, it's, it's a very big relief, you can say. Um, it's it's kind of good that, you know, just in case if we did kind of fall off a little bit, we have them to lean on for a second until we, get, you know, until we game plan and get our track back. But it feels really good that our defense is the way it is because um, it helps us in a sense that we know they're 
oh, they're going to get a stop. So we have another chance to come in and, you know, put some more points on the board to even help them out as well. Follow-up question about the offense. Tube is a little, for, for his standard anyway, right, a little, a little slow out of the gate. Still has 200 yards in two games, but had, had a couple of balls on the ground um, against West Virginia. Uh, afterward, LD talked about, you know, keeping his, keeping his spirits up, keeping him head in the right direction. I, I take it that's, that's something that, uh, that a return to form will come for Chuba, and until it does, you will, you will work to keep, uh, keep him pushing. Is that right? Uh, yes, sir. I feel like right now, even though Chuba had that, um, had that little moment, I feel like he's, his leadership went up times 10, even with that being his adversity. And that he, even him messing up and doing stuff like that helped him uh, realize, like, oh, I got to work harder, which helped us look at him like, you know, at first everybody looked at him like, oh, he's a superstar. Let's, you know, let's hop on behind him. But now just seeing that adversity of him and how he's firing off uh, off of that helps us because, you know, we firing off, we're, we're eating that, we're eating that energy that he's giving off. So it's actually helping the whole offense, that little adversity. Okay, appreciate it, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Our next question comes from Frank Bonner from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Hey, Jelani, you guys have had two games in this new normal of, of limited fans, and this is your first game on the road. Do you anticipate the feeling to be any different than the first two games? Uh, no, sir. Uh, we always feel, you know, we always feel like uh, going into each game, it's the same no matter who we playing, no matter where we playing. We always try to keep that same momentum and same energy everywhere. Even It might be even in practice. We practice like we're playing a game. So I feel like we'll be fine and we'll pretty much be the same or even better. Say. You think the uh, the travel to, to, to Lawrence with the, the COVID protocols is going to be, you know, what differences are, are you anticipating for that? Uh, I just say probably more social distancing uh, probably will be put in place. But to to be honest, I can't really tell you. I don't really know anything right now. I'm just practicing and getting ready for the next right. game. I appreciate you. No problem. Our next question comes from Jacob Unruh from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Jacob. Hey, Jelani, kind of along those lines, uh, traveling-wise, going to be more space on a bus or a plane or, or whatever. You're a pretty big guy. Do you kind of welcome that extra space? Oh, yeah, most definitely. If I can have my own two seats, I, I'm fine with that. <laughs> more room to sleep. The, how much space did you have before? Did you get to stretch out at all? Oh, yes. I We um, we pretty much social distance before all of this happened anyway. So, it's you know, it's no different than what we've been doing. Yeah, and you're busting a lot now, too. That's different, right? Oh, yes, most definitely. Awesome. Thanks, Jelani. No problem. Jelani, what are you, like 6'7", six, 6'8"? Seven, six, what's, what's the exact height? Yeah, I'm 6'7", and okay, a half, so I believe, something like that. I know that extra leg room is not going to hurt you too much. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> all right. Hey, our final question before we let you go is going to come from Maley Jones from O-State TV. Go ahead, Maley. Hi. So um, obviously everything looks a lot different this year and especially like the game day atmosphere and the energy inside the stadium. So how does all of that affect your mental game being so much different than what you're used to? Uh, it don't affect too much, but um, having the fans that we have over the last two games actually been pretty, pretty awesome. It, is, it sounded like we still had a full pack house and then just preparing. We always prepare the same, no matter if we, We'll have fans, don't have fans. We always stay the same. So it pretty much didn't change that much. But I feel like what we have had was pretty, you know, pretty outstanding crowd. So it helped a lot. Okay, thank you. No problem. Jelani, thank you so much for hanging out with us here for a little bit, for taking the time and, and for uh, answering some of these questions. We really appreciate you. Hope you have a good night. Yes, sir. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Tevin, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing good, you? Doing well, thanks. Just before you walked in, they asked Jelani about having a little bit more space on the bus. 
Oh, and yeah. He was talking about he doesn't mind having a little extra space. I'd imagine you're in that same boat, right? Exactly. I'm about like 320. I need more space than him. <laughs> all right. So enjoy the extra space on this one, all right? Uh -huh. All right. Well, I'll tell you. So the way it'll go is we've got about 25 members of the media here, and they'll just ask you questions individually, and you, you just have the conversation with them one at a time, okay? Okay. All right. So our first question is going to come from Joseph Fazio from the Ocali. Go ahead, Joseph. Hey, Tevin, how's it going? Uh, it's going good. Uh, so now that the team has two two games under its belt, you've seen what this offensive line can can do. Is there anything you can pinpoint that either, you know, Coach Dickey or other guys on team need to work on? Uh, I do think we, as a group, as an offensive line, we need to work on our finish better. You know, we're beginning uh, from week two, uh, from week one to week two, we did improve a little, but we're not to the point where what's expected of us and what we need to be this year. And, you know, going with Shane Ellingworth coming in at QB, also having Spencer on the sideline when he's ready, is it easy to, you know, flip through QBs as one's a pocket passer and one's a dual threat? You know, I actually do find it kind of um, – kind of difficult, you know, because I just have to change up my whole way I have to actually like, um, pass block somebody, you know. It's uh, it's actually different, you know, because as a pocket passer, I got to be more strong, willing, and like, and, and then uh, as a dual threat quarterback, at the in the back of my mind, I have to always think about him as possibility of scrambling or not. All right. Thanks, Devin. Mm -hmm. Our next question comes from Jenny Carlson from the Oklahoma. Go ahead, Jenny. Hey, Tevin, how are you? I'm doing good, you? Good. So after the game on uh, Saturday, Casey uh, Dunn referenced uh, that as an old school SEC type of game that you guys won with, with that score. Has that been at all strange to win these games the way you guys have? I mean, this is not typical OSU, typical Big 12 either. Yeah, you know, uh, we're used to scoring more points than usual. Like, we have them this year, of course. But uh, apparently, I mean, many, like, as many touchdowns we can get, you know, I'm, I'm all right with it. As long as we always end up with a W. You know, your defense is obviously uh, so veteran. And I know that even in game planning with Shane play in, in his first start, the thought was, hey, the defense can can hold this hold this up while Shane gets his first experience. Um, what's that like to sort of see those guys um, in practice, your defensive teammates, as they sort of are, you know, now there's so much, you know, on them winning games and, and playing that way. What's that like to experience uh, as you see them go through it? Well, I mean, first, defense has been just excellent. They've been, doing, they've been just been amazing, you know. It's just, and then just come back to your question, uh, it's about like it's finally like, you know, I like all this happens to me in practice, you know, and then actually seeing it now in a game that makes me feel good. It's like, wow, now I can actually understand they're doing this to me. It's actually happening in the game. Cause I, got, I understand how good they are, you know. I, I go against them every day. You take the brunt of it and then they turn it on everybody else. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Thanks, Devin. Yeah, no problem. Our next question comes from Cody Nagel from Go Pokes. Go ahead, Cody. Hey, Tevin, you've moved – kind of back and forth between right tackle and left tackle. Is there one that you're more comfortable with? Uh, right tackle, for sure. I guess what's the, the reasoning behind that? Uh, it's just more – it's more comfortability thing for me. You know, it's uh, – I've been playing right tackle since before high school. You know, this is something i always been at. And then, you know, switching back to left, it's just a whole bunch of, like uh, – it's like it's like confusing for me. Not it's like not really confusing, but it's more challenging for me to uh, think about my steps and stuff like that. That was. Now, have you put any thought to, or or anything into a potential career? I um, mean, you know, in the NFL, is that anything that you've thought about at all? Yeah, yeah, I definitely am. Yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. I guess was there any consideration? I guess after last year, you know, entering entering the draft. Uh. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, I did. I did think about it for a little bit. You know, it was a it was a controversy for um, probably like two, three weeks. I had to think about it with inner inner leaving through myself. Gotcha. Thank you. No problem. Our next question comes from Jared Alatore from the Ocali. Go ahead, Jared. 
Hey, Tevin, just from what you've seen during practice, have you noticed different types of uh, coaching and game planning compared from Spencer to Shane? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, we, um, we even have uh, different design plays now, you know. It's, uh, it's like we have – because, you know, how Spencer, how great, like, uh, he could use, like, use his feet, you know, how much of a threat that was, you know. And losing that um, – type of dual threat, you know, we had to change like like certain tinks or technique stuff throughout like the whole offense. So there's definitely some changes that have been happening. Yeah, and it seems like Josh has been more of a vocal leader, at least so far to the team. Um, teaming up with him, I mean, what's it been like? Oh, it's been great. I love Josh, you know. I mean him hang out sometimes, even outside of football, you know, he's – He's a very big, like, uh, inspirational guy, and I'm actually glad we have him here because without him, I feel like motivation, you know, would be kind of hard because he's he's the one that's mostly vocal around here. You know, he's the one that gets everybody going, and I'm actually very appreciative that he's here. Thank you, Tim. No problem. All right, Dan, our last few questions here. Our next question is going to come from Scott Wright from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Scott. All right, Tevin, I asked Jelani about you. I want to ask you about him now. How has, uh, how has Jelani improved as a blocker this year? Oh, um, I say he actually improved tremendously because, you know, now he's actually – I've seen, I actually seen him multiple times dri driving people at least like 15 to 20 yards. Uh, even after I see the ball like gone, like Chuba's run to left, he's over there still driving this guy. And I think he, that – him putting that to his game and like evolves him, you know, it's like, I don't know how to say it really, but it makes him a better player than it has been approved. Jumping back to the, uh, the NFL stuff. When did you start to really think of yourself and start to realize that you could play in the NFL or had a future in the NFL possibly? Uh, I would say uh, it was about around quarantine started, you know, I started thinking that's when I started thinking about going or not. Really? Mm -hmm. All right. Good deal. Thank you. Our next question comes from Ryan Breeden from the Ocali. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, Tevin. So um, you talked a little bit earlier about the confidence and um, comfortability that you guys have with the defense. But I kind of wanted to switch gears and talk about the special teams unit because they've been pretty darn good this year too. But So I wanted to ask what you guys' confidence is in those guys this year. Oh, uh, I'm actually very confident, you know, Alex is still perfect from field goals, you know, I still, I still mess around with him in the beginning of uh, practices when we start doing our field goal stuff, you know, I mess with Jake, I mess with Tom, mess with Alex, you know, we're all, we're all buddies, you know, I even mess with him in the locker room, I, about, I was about to go mess with him uh, right now, but uh, I got called to do some media, so I'm, uh, that's a little delayed, so I'm going to come do that a little bit, hopefully they're still there. Trying to uh, trying to take their jobs as the kicker oh, yeah. punter, maybe. Oh, oh hey, I'm just saying, y'all don't want to see me out here punting right now. Hey, yeah, actually, what you should do is see Josh at punting. He's actually he's actually pretty good. Josh. <laughs> so, and um, also, Coach Gundy yesterday talked about um, how he's put some extra effort into special teams this year, as than maybe years past. Have you been able to kind of notice that? That's just kind of looking on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always been an emphasis on special teams, but uh, I can tell this year has been a been a change. You know, there's been more time devoted to more special teams. Awesome. Thank you, Tevin. I appreciate it. No problem. All right, Tevin. Our final question is going to come from Maley Jones from O State TV. Go ahead, Maley. Well, I'm going to ask you the same question, but um, with everything being different this year and kind of the game day energy is different and the atmosphere is a little bit different, does that affect your mental game at all? Uh, uh, I'll say it wouldn't, you know, because I like to play in my own area anyways. Like, even before, like, last year, I don't like to – I like to try to tune out noise. Like, you know, the fans are amazing. I love the fans, you know, of course. And it's actually been surprisingly loud as the games before. You know, the fans are really working really hard, you know. I feel like they're the 12th man of the team. Coach Gundy does too, you know. He, did, he always, like, always likes to thank <laughs> the fans even in the locker room after the games. But – but, yeah, I like to try to, like, tune everything out and be, like, in this home for myself. Okay, thank you. No problem. Hey, Tevin, before I let you go, I've got a question for you that's not really a media question per se or anything like that. 
Um, the other day I was talking with my son, he's eight years old and we were watching, rewatching the game. And I told him to watch you as an offensive lineman. And he said, why should I watch him? I said, look how athletic he is. Look how good his feet are. And I was trying to point out these attributes curious, like what maybe would you have said? Like, what do you think are your best attributes? What are the things that maybe I should have told him to be keeping an eye on? I, I think you said it the best, my athleticism, you know, I, so I'm just so say, <laughs> you know, I got some quick feet on me, you know, I got a, you know, I got an athletic background. I used to play like three sports, a little dabble in other sports, you know, it'd been all right. Okay, so I'm, I, I need to bring him up to be a good athlete then. That's the key. Uh, hey, more sports the better, so I'd say. <laughs> hey, well, I appreciate you so much. Thanks so much for taking the time with us today. And, and before we – while we've got everybody here, um, is there anything else that you wanted to say? No, no, I'm good, no. I'd rather go mess with the, skill, uh, the specialist, specialist real quick. About to do. All right, well, go enjoy. We appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time. All right, thank you. All right, have a great night. You too. Thanks. Thanks to everybody for participating and hanging out with us here tonight. We appreciate you as well.